Crossopis is an evergreen tree, and it introduced in our country since since, uh, since before 20 years. Uh, when it first came to Ethiopia, it was planted around uh, Tredoa and here in Akfar Amibara Oreda. It was deliberately came to our country for the conservation purpose. Then, then finally, it became an aggressive. Uh, and aggressively invaded all areas of uh, the, especially the rangelands here in Afar. So, uh, uh, under pros the other problem is under, pro under Prosopis, uh, there are nothing grow under it. 1.2 million hectares in Afar region is covered by this tree, uh, and, uh, and recent studies also show that uh, per, per year around uh, 55,000 hectare is uh, added per year. So, uh, of course, it's difficult, but the community understands the seriousness of the problem, and they are trying to manage, trying to clear and reclaim their lands, because they are pure pastoralists, their life is depending on the rangeland, so uh, when they lose their, their, range, their rangeland, they lose their hope, they lose their livestock, so there are some people uh, using uh, the reclaimed land for crop, crop production. The one we visited uh, this afternoon is the one, one of the target cavalry. They are using their land uh, in the post office and use their land for uh, crop production, like uh, sesame, onion, uh, and some places also maize, and also uh, they produce cotton, cotton also. Cotton is a cash, cash crop for them. Another activity of uh, FPMP, our project is uh, pod crushing activity. Pod crushing have uh, three benefits for the community. The first one is uh, when you crush the pod, you minimize the dissemination of the tree. The bigger uh, objective of the project is that one. The other thing is it's income generation for the beneficiaries because they collect with fuel price and also after crushing they sell for the community and also for other uh, interested people. They use that one for animal feeding uh, for the community and also there are some uh, some interested people who are living in the town. And Ali Dej Community Development Committee uh, have cleared 100 hectares of land from Prosopis over the last three years. They clear it by hand. Each plant uh, takes one person or two people uh, a half an hour to an hour to dig up using a panga. Uh, on day one they cut the, the leaves off the top of the plant and day two they, they dig it out each one by hand. Okay, this is the first part of removing prosopis where they chop down the tree. He's cutting the main branches with the panga to be able to remove them so they're still big enough to use for fencing. Okay, and we made some more progress with the tree. Okay, so yalla. final tree yalla. has nearly been removed. So here we are, job complete, and they have now cut it down to the stump, which they will dig up and remove tomorrow. And the job is never finished, uh, on to the next one. Okay, we're on to the next phase now, where they are starting to dig a hole around the roots of the tree that we just cut down. So you can see they're digging away the mud around the root to make a hole and then they will axe out the root afterwards. So you can see they've got a deep hole now around the roots, so soon they'll be cutting them out. Okay, here they are digging the root out of a prosopis plant, which is the last stage of removing it. On day one, they cut all the leaves and branches off and the next day they come back and it takes two or three people around half an hour of hard work to dig out the root.
to ensure that the plant doesn't come back again. Farm Africa provide them with the axes and the knives they need to dig up and remove the roots. As well as using the reclaimed land for livestock grazing, there's areas where they're growing grass and not letting the livestock on, they're trying to protect it. And they're storing it for use to feed their animals in the dry season. Last season, they managed to harvest 100,000 burr of hay, which they distributed to 500 households, which kept their livestock and food throughout the dry season. It's particularly nice to see that they learned how to do this from Farm Africa, having previously had food shipped in for their livestock during droughts. So they're now more sustainable and able to withstand drought for themselves and their communities. Okay, previously during the dry season, we don't have anything for the cattle to feed. Therefore, our cattle will die uh, during dry season. But now uh, our cattle are survived uh, because of this program. For the first time in their uh, history in this area, they uh, managed to uh, grow maize for the first time and uh, they are using that one. Uh, he is saying before uh, Farm Africa came to this area, this area is a forest area, it's full of uh, prosopisters. And then with the help of Farm Africa, we managed to cut the prosopis away. And then we managed to grow a grass, so that grass helps us uh, to be a food for our cattle and we also distribute that grass to every household.